Hi there, Kevin Hoyt here, Principal Evangelist with Kazing, with a preview of a project I've been working on. Preview kinda starts with this. So this is a stack of sensors and a radio and a bunch of other stuff. Let me explain it to you really quick. On the bottom here is an Arduino Uno. The Arduino is effectively the brains of this particular sensor stack. The next one up we'll come back to in a minute. Um, Actually, let's do that one now. The next one up is the GPS board. So you see the GPS chip here and this kind of beigey thing on top? That's actually the antenna. So now we've got an Arduino for the brains and a GPS chip to let us know where we are, what direction we're going, how fast we're going in that direction, and things like that. The board on top of that, we'll come back to in a second, and then the board on top of that is a prototyping surface, lets me kind of just piece together uh, components and, and not have to worry about soldering and unsoldering if things go wrong. Uh, so it's a nice little way just to kind of prototype and put something together fairly quickly. Uh, and in this case, there are two sensors inside of that. The first sensor over here is a temperature and humidity sensor. So it will actually take the temperature and humidity of the surrounding air, pass that off to the Arduino and then we can do with it, with it whatever we want from that point. The sensor next to it is a compass. So the GPS will give us heading if we're moving, but it doesn't give us really an accurate heading if we're sitting still. The compass is like a traditional compass that you would hold in your hand and see where you are. So that's a compass, and the compass here actually has a, an accelerometer in it. The accelerometer lets us detect tilt, and then it can use that tilt to be able to calculate uh, the direction of the compass, regardless of whether or not the compass is, the chip itself is pointed up or down. That's, that board I skipped over there is a XB radio. It's a radio that's designed for electronic sensors. It's uh, gives this one to give us about a range of about a kilometer to a mile, uh, depending on obstructions and things of the nature. Uh, it runs off a very low power footprint. Um, it's fast enough for data uh, in terms of the sensors that are on the board here, but you wouldn't really want to use it for like a video or something like that that you would find in your home. So the wireless radio then can transmit temperature, humidity, uh, accelerometer data, X, Y, and Z, can the compass heading, the GPS, the position of the GPS, the speed of the GPS, the heading of the GPS, the date and time that the sensors uh, of the GPS is taking. It passes all of that off, all that data comes through the Arduino, passes it through this radio, and then it gets picked up and another XB radio. Now this XB radio is actually a, uh, just exactly like the one that's in there. XB radios are designed to work in a mesh. So this one will actually be connected via USB to my laptop, and then I can collect the data in real time over the air, regardless of where that uh, sensor array is at. And then we will go ahead and plug that into the Kazin gateway and send that off real time to anywhere else we want to go to. For example, we might want to send it off to the web for a visualization so we can see uh, on uh, in the web browser what we're doing via web sockets and thanks to the Kazing uh, to the Kazing gateway and then of course um, we can also maybe pass that off to a data store so that we can uh, store the data for later reference and playback so that we are um, uh, capturing that data and can record that data and play it back in case of emergency. What kind of environment would need all this sensor data, wireless transmission, and a backup? We'll get to that in a second. So we've got our sensor array here. It's got again, it's all kinds of different data on it: uh, temperature, and humidity, compass, accelerometer, a GPS chip, all going over wireless radio. And we're gonna, what, and I'm thinking of what industry might be able to use this kind of real-time telemetry data to be able to record it and play it back real time. How about the aviation industry? So we're gonna go ahead and take our sensor array and I'm gonna mount it inside of our aircraft here. And then our aircraft will be able to go around and uh, take flight and we'll be able to capture that data and broadcast it in real time. Again, thanks to the Kazin Gateway. And we'll be able to store that in a database, for example, with Mongo. Uh, so that we can play back that data at any point in the future. So give me just a minute to, to mount all this up and uh, power it with a little 9 volt battery and then we'll go ahead and see this in action. Alright, so I've mounted our sensor array into our mock aircraft. I couldn't expense an Airbus, sorry about that. Um, and uh, it just uh, held in there with some wire for this uh, demonstration. You can see the GPS chip sitting at the top here, and it's powered by a 9-volt battery uh, that sits on the wing. Uh, word of advice, if you, uh, 
If you ever have a, an aircraft that you're boarding that has a nine volt, it's powered by a nine volt battery sitting on the wing, you might want to think about taking a different aircraft. All right. Now, uh, over here, I have my computer and I've got that uh, other mesh XB sitting over here and we can uh, just go ahead and plug that into the USB port. And let me go ahead and start a recording here so you can see the screen when we record this particular uh, demonstration. So you can see on there, there's the aircraft telemetry. Uh, it doesn't have anything going to it right now uh, because I don't have any messages going through. What I need to do is get the data off of the USB port and into the Kazin gateway. So what I have for that is a simple Java program. So I just flip over here to Eclipse and run our telemetry data. Go over to our user interface and now we can see the, uh, the heading, the temperature is about 58 degrees out. It's a little chilly as the sun starts to set. It's about 19% uh, relative humidity. We're at 5,992 feet. And uh, the GPS chip says we're moving about 0.17. That's because it, it jumps around as it triangulates. But now we need to go flying. And for this, I have my lovely assistant, Paige. Hello. Hello, Paige. Paige, why don't you come over here? And Paige is going to be our pilot for the day. She's going to take this aircraft. She's going to walk across the street with it so you get an idea for the radio working. Then she's going to walk back over to the neighbor's driveway. And then she's going to walk back up here and land the aircraft. All right, you ready, Paige? Go flying. Nice, good sound effects. So there goes Paige. And while she's going off, the uh, telemetry is tracking inside the uh, web page. In this case, it looks like she's moving at about 2.38 miles per hour. Uh, the compass and the uh, other headings are kind of jumping around. Again, this is a preview. I'm still working out some of the kinks in terms of the uh, accuracy of the data as it re gets reported. And you can see that she's now across the street. And the uh, map actually shows that. And now she's going to walk across the street. Over here. And to the driveway over here in our neighbor's yard. And then she's going to take a turn back into our yard. And then she's going to land the aircraft. And again, you can see the GPS being updated, the speed being updated, the, the, uh, the tilt and the direction as she's sailing through the air, coming in for landing. Watch out. Oh, that's beautiful right there. Thanks, Paige. No problem. So there we have uh, an example of a real-time sensor array reporting real-time data across uh, into the browser. It could be any browser that's listening. And again, that data could be stored for uh, emergency recovery purposes and so on. And uh, that's our preview of a bigger project we're working on that we'll be bringing to you soon.